I am super excited to introduce my guest. She has been teaching yoga and meditation for over two decades. She founded Mukti Yoga School in 2004, which has certified hundreds of yoga teachers around the world. She's had the honor of working with celebrities, professional athletes, and Olympians. She attributes her peaceful presence and success to her daily meditation practice. I want to welcome my friend, my teacher, a guiding light, Julie Rader. Welcome to Hollywood Dreammaker. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be here, Billy. Thank you. So, you know, I created my podcast because I wanted to inspire young artists to follow their dreams. Not, you know, not even just actors, anybody who has a dream that, if, you know, if it's in your heart, then, you know, you have to go after it and you have to go after it with a vengeance like you need it. And, you know, dreams do come true, you know, and um, I just I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, I want to tell the audience a little story, you know, just to start off on how I met you. Because it was uh, about seven years ago, I was going through a really rough time in my life. I, uh, I had lost my 11 year old niece to brain cancer. I had lost my stepfather to prostate cancer. Uh, my wife and I uh, had a miscarriage. Um, my dog got ran over by a car and died. And then my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer. So my world was literally turned upside down. And, you know, I had just lost two loved ones to cancer. And all of a sudden, my wife has cancer. And I am going to doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment. And I was sitting in a lobby and I was losing my shit. I mean, I was, I could not control my emotions. And I, I think the doctors were more concerned about me than my wife because I was a mess. You know, I, the beautiful life that I've created, the beautiful wife, my, my son, I just felt like cancer, here we go, what's going on? Here we go again, you know? And I just, I, I felt like my roots had been ripped out from underneath me. And I was just, I couldn't control my emotions. So my beautiful wife, you know, when she decided, you know, one of her passions was to become a yoga teacher. She always wanted that, that was a dream, but she worked her nine to five and, you know, it was, it was kind of impossible because of, you know, having a child and going to, you know, doing her thing, but, you know, cancer kind of put, put the brakes on everything, you know, and in the, I like to call it the shit of cancer, the fertilizer. You know, she planted seeds, um, you know, the, she said, I'm going to do this. I want to become a yoga teacher. And she started taking her yoga teacher training with you. And, um, you know, she would come home and she would be lit up. And like, you know, I, all of a sudden she's like, I could see this was her passion. This is what she loved to do. And, you know, I was still a mess at home. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was emotionally, I mean, just talking about it, I get emotional. And she came home one day and she said, you know, I just had an amazing meditation. You know, you should, you should try it. I think it'd be good for you. And, you know, Billy from Brooklyn, you know, meditation, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I you know, no, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not interested, but, you know, she kept telling me about meditation. She said, you know, you should come, you should try it. You should try it. You should try it. So finally, I went and I, I went over to um, the Green Yogi, which was a few blocks away from where I lived in Manhattan Beach. And I remember sitting in class and for the first time with you and doing a meditation, you know, and at first it was, you know, it was a little difficult for me, you know, to even just sit, you know, uh, my brain was running like monkey brain all over the place, you know. Um, but, you know, I kept coming. There was something to it. And, and, I, and your energy and your light, I mean, you just have this beautiful, amazing presence. You just shine your light all over the place. You could feel it, that vibration, that love, because that's where you come from. You come from love. And, uh, you know, I was hooked. I mean, I was there every, I don't forget what it was, Tuesday morning or whatever, but I was there all the time. And I really, I found something, you know, and I... 
I found my roots back, you know, I found how to get out of my head and get into my heart. And it was transformational for me, life changing for me, you know, because, you know, in the shit of fertilizer of cancer, you know, I planted seeds. I planted the seeds of this Manhattan Actor Studio here. You know, in the worst time of my life, I got a calling, you know, saying, hey, you, sh- you, you need to build this school. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I, this is not a good time for me. I can't, you know, but you had given me my roots back. At the time, I needed that. I would never have been able to build what I built here. You know, you gave me the roots to, to, to plant those seeds in the fertilizer of the shit of cancer and a beautiful thing came out of it. This Manhattan Actors Studio that's been here for seven years and I get to touch people's lives on a daily basis and it's because of you. I mean, you know, when I read, you know, that you've trained hundreds of yoga teachers around the world, worldwide, and I think about the rippling effect that that does. I mean, you've taught me and I've taught hundreds and hundreds of people how to meditate and how to breathe from children to older people. I mean, it's, it's the rippling effect. So you have touched lives like you can't even imagine. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for being such a beautiful guiding light and, and, and just giving me my roots back. And, and I, don't, I no longer lead from here, I lead from here, from my heart. You know, I, w- I used to be in my head all the time. You know, now I tell my actors all the time, I said, when you're in your head, you're dead. When you're in your heart, you're smart. You want oh, to come I from- I love that. Did you come up with that? That's brilliant. I, don't know where I got that from, but I, I'll take credit for it. Um, yeah. But it's should. really, you know, as an actor, you know, when you're coming into a room and you're in your head and you're worried about somebody liking you or forgetting your lines or, you know, whatever, trying to get the part, you know, you really, you shoot yourself in the foot before walking in the door. Right. What I teach is, how about if you came into the room and you're not coming to get anything, you're coming to give, you're coming to shine your light, your God-given talent, and that's it. I'm just here. The, the light within me is going to say hello to the light within you, and I'm going to shine my light, and I'm going to have some fun, and I'm not here to get anything. I'm here to give and, and do that and have fun and walk out the door and don't worry about it. If it's meant to be, if it's the universe, it's for you, it's going to be for you. So just coming from shining your light. And and I truly got that from you because I used to be the person in my head all the time. And, you know, the mind is a dangerous place. Never going alone, you know, yeah, right. stay out of there, take a friend, you know? So I truly found my, my roots and, and I found leading from my heart from you and and I and I want to thank you so much so I wanted you on the show because I want you to see like I didn't know nothing about chakras and meditation oh this was all new to me and you know you've been doing it for over two decades and you teach it so I, I thought you'd be an amazing guest to be on the show so thank you for saying yes Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for asking me. And it's such an honor. And wow, thank you for that beautiful intro. And, you know, there, there's, it's so true about the lotus flower that the roots are in the mud. And from, so there's, there's that saying, no mud, no lotus. And it's, it's so true. It's, the transformation that they're, you know, transformation, like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon, there's that struggle that comes with it. And then it, then it's, and that's what happened with you. You went through all of those things, all at the same time had that cumulative effect of, of with the cancer and with your dog and with the miscarriage and just so many heartbreaks all one compounding on top of each other. And it is sometimes, it is sometimes the challenges and the struggle that really lead us on the path to where we're meant to be. And I don't know if I, I think I shared with you how I learned meditation. My, my mom, when I was in high school was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage three breast cancer. And she, um, she's a survivor, but she, she was an RN. So she knew she was going to 
um, go through the chemotherapy and everything. And, um, but she started studying alternative methods. And so she began visualizing the chemo like Pac-Man eating away just at the brain tumor. And I was a gymnast and a soccer player. And so she knew she could weave meditation in through sports visualization. So she started telling me about some of these studies that um, about athletes that were using mental imagery to really enhance their sports performances. So I started practicing that and I've always been a very visual person anyway. And then I found that not only were my gymnastics routines becoming better and I was performing better in competitions, but I also was better equipped to deal with my mom losing her hair when I was going through my own hormonal changes in high school. And watching my mom go through all of this, not knowing if she was going to survive by just having these tools to focus my mind, even though it was for sports, started spilling out into every area of my life. So I then started for the rest of high school and undergrad and grad school, if I could weave in a study of the mind, I would. And it it has changed my life in the most um, profound way. And I, I love sharing meditation. It's, I, I meditate every single day and I, I am, I am so grateful. Thank you for your kind words. I, every day I, I just visualize the light coming in through the crown of my head and down through my whole body, down to the center of the earth. And then my heart becoming a magnet to the light from above and below. And then I just visualize the light expanding out beyond my home, beyond my city, beyond the country, beyond the world. And I just imagine it shining out. So thank you uh, for your kind words, because that that's my intention to be a bright light that hopefully will uplift others just you're doing it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> uh, you know, I want to. I want to add that you know, my wife is uh, cancer free. She's. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to say she's a survivor, not a survivor. She's a thriver. She. She thriver. is a thriver. You know, she, she very much is. She's that lotus flower. I mean, she really, you know, and mm -hmm. and she teaches. You know, she, we. She opened up Manhattan Model Studios. She handles the models. Oh. And she modeled for many many years. So she has all that experience. You know, I have sometimes I have models knocking on the door and that's not my cup of tea, but that's what she does. But mm. she teaches them exactly, you know, what, you know, she's, she went through her teacher training with you. Yeah. You know, I went through my teacher training with you. Yes, you know, I remember. 2017 uh, to get my, my pranayama uh, teacher training. So, you know, all of those, I mean, she teaches it, you know, she teaches young models, you know, not, it's not about being just, pretty on the outside it's about being pretty on the inside you know yeah, I it's love that loving yourself you know yeah. uh, and, and really shining your light so you know like I said your effect <laughs> you know you, people are being touched by what you teach so so thank you thank you so I don't you know when I, I what's a chakra like I remember like when I heard about chakras i was like what's a chakra so can you maybe yeah. you explain what a chakra is yes um so there are seven main chakras in in the ancient yogic system along the spine or really in a in a tube along the spine called shashumna and shashumna is in it translates it's a sanskrit word for psychic energy passageway so it's, it's an area where these energy centers in the body meet. And it's, it's thought where our mind, body, and energy merge. It, 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 they're thought to be, though they're energetic points, but these spirals of energy. So as we awaken, 
the, these different chakras or wheels. Chakra means wheel. As we wheel these spinning wheels of energy, we, we evolve to higher forms of consciousness. Many people in our society tend to reside in the lower chakras, the first and second chakra. And it's it, through the chakra system, so that the first chakra represents the first seven years of life and the second chakra, the, the next seven from age seven to 14 and, and so on. But many times in our society, people reside in the lower chakras. They don't get beyond it. And the, the lower manifestation of these chakras are fear and survival mode. Um, and as we, so the first, the first chakra, first energy center is represented by the earth. So it, it's really putting our roots down. It's our, um, family lineage, it's our survival technique. And then where we, where we get our footing really. And then the second chakra, which is the water element, it's where we learn to, our survival needs are met. So we allow more pleasure in our lives. And it's, um, it's we learn to go with the flow more. And it's also our abundance consciousness. Do we live in the belief that there's enough for everyone, not just money, resources, time, energy, love, or do we believe in scarcity? And so once we move on from that, we get into the third chakra and that's our center of vitality. That's, that's fire element, it's the solar energy. It's our health, it's our willpower. It's, it's what gives us um, a sense of discipline. So as yogis, that's why we have a, a sadhana that we do or a morning meditation practice. And it's the, the third chakra that, that gives us the discipline to, to stick with it every day rather than um, say, no, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just not do it today. And it, it gives us the willpower. It gives us the ability to set clear, healthy boundaries in our lives so that we can live in harmony with others. And then we get into the heart chakra. And once we're in the heart chakra, there's this opening of the heart where it's, we forgive. We forgive ourselves. We then forgive others. We, we take off the burden of unforgiveness so that there's this lightness about us. And at that and when we open up through the heart chakra, there's a sense of balance and, and ease and grace that we live within. And then we get into the throat chakra as we continue moving up. And the throat chakra, the ancient yogis thought it was the most challenging of the throat of the chakras to open because it is the center of purification and it's, it's finding our voice but it's also purifying our body. And as we open the throat chakra, then we, then we really emerge into the third eye, um, the sixth chakra. And that is the, um, the, the third eye, that area of intuition, that, that inner knowing that, that we have, that, that gut knowing, that first intuitive thought, and we learn to trust it and to go with it. And then the seventh, it is, it's beyond all of the elements. And it's, it's this, it's thought that babies are born with it wide open, that soft spot at the top of the head. And as we age, it, it, it closes off a bit. So through the meditation and through pranayama and these practices, we open it up again so that we all become a channel or a vessel connecting heaven and earth for lack of a better term. But we then learn to trust and move in that, in that guidance that just flows through us when we're open to it. Thank you so much for explaining that. You know, there's a, you know, for me, I know, you know, it sounds a little woo-woo, you know? Of course, yeah. But, but, you know, if you would have told me this 10 years ago, I would have said, well, yeah, shocker. But 
I started practicing on a daily basis and I've had the most incredible meditations ever that you can't, you know, I mean, I've, I've literally been left my body, like my body, my shell, this bag of bones is not who I am. You know, my energy, you know, I had like an out of body experience. I mean, I literally, I, I used to, I used to meditate every morning when I drop off my son and then I go to a church and sit in a quiet little corner and just mm -hmm. spend a half hour in meditation. And I remember I was doing a meditation and I, I felt that energy, that light that I, I can't even explain it, but it was just this like rush of energy, you know, coming from the crown of my head and filling me up. And it was like this, it was almost a little scary. It was like, what's going on here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then I just literally collapsed. I had, I remember I, I, it's a little Asian lady was, are you okay? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> I'm great. Why'd you get, wake me? I was in this amazing place, you know, and it's been, you know, it's, I, I chase that now and, and, and it's been, it's been amazing, but you know, COVID kind of got into my daily routine because my son wasn't going to school anymore, you know, and he was teaching, doing his uh, classes in his, in his bedroom. So my daily yoga meditation practice went kind of out the window for me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I've just recently been finding my way back and I found that it's been a little harder for me Be before I could meditate and it didn't matter. You know, I remember I was, I meditated at the church and they were doing construction. There's a jackhammer going, da, 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 da. it didn't matter because I would incorporate that. It would be like chipping away at stuff I don't need anymore. And a little, somebody would flush a toilet and I would just visualize all that stuff that was chipped yeah. away. So I would incorporate everything, you know, before when I started meditating, it was like, oh, no, I could hear somebody or, you know, and, and what I learned that I, from you was, is you want to incorporate all that stuff, the yeah. sounds, you know, the, 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 the temperature, all of that, you want to bring it into it. And, and, you know, after a while, those sounds become a symphony of sounds, and then they just kind of disappear. Right. Or even, even your thoughts, you know, when a thought comes into your head, you know, oh, I got to go to the grocery store okay, you know, you can address it. I got to go to the grocery store, okay? And then, you know, I like to see like a pair of scissors cut and then just let it drift away. Yeah. And then no more thoughts. And then another thought might pop up. Okay, then I'll focus on that one thought and then cut and let it drift away like a cloud. No more yeah. thoughts. And then after a while, those, those thoughts become, you know, further and further away. And then there's no more thoughts. Right. And then, and then there's no more sounds. You know, yeah. and, and what I truly found is the key is, is stillness, you know, truly yeah. stillness, no movement whatsoever, just the breath, yeah. the natural flow of the breath coming in and out of the body. And really, um, just, just if, the, if your mind wanders, you know, and it does go somewhere else, always go back to the breath, the inhalation yeah. and the exhalation and difference in temperature. So, you know, you can, you know, I love being bringing, you know, I, what I teach is your yoga nidra, mm -hmm. but yeah. what I've done is I've taken, you know, I, I've studied other, the, you know, I've studied, I've had some great teachers, you know, I had mm -hmm. Jill Willard with, you know, I am, and she's yeah. wonderful, you know, so adding a, a, almost an in, uh, incantation or an affirmation or something on the mm -hmm. breath, I am whatever it is you need. I am grounded. I am peaceful. I am loved, you know, to breathe into that, you yeah. know, which, which I, I feel that's really, truly powerful when you tell yourself who you really are, you know, the, yeah. the small voice is going to tell you fear and noise and all that other stuff. But when you can really tell yourself, I am love, you mm -hmm. know, and breathe into that, you know, it's, it just, it, it fills you up. It fills your heart up coming from that energy. Yeah, and you almost, you know, and, and there's, you almost have to fake it till you make it. You just, you just tell yourself what it is you want to be. And one thing I've been really playing around with lately is living in my future reality. So knowing that there are many dimensions going on at the same time and knowing exactly seeing in my mind and knowing exactly where I want to go and living as though that's true now. And as if my present reality is the past. Love that. 
And so that's one thing with the mantra too, you know, whatever it is, if, if somebody is not feeling very loved, maybe they're feeling really um, kind of depressed or a lot of people during COVID have just have felt there's been a lot of mental health issues for sure. And so reminding themselves, I am loved, you know, like even if somebody feels like no one's thinking about me, I'm not seeing anyone. I'm, you know, like I am loved, I am loved. And, or even just with the breath, if there's not an affirmation with it, the thick non Han technique of just simply, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And it's something that can be done now that we're starting in LA to get traffic back again. <laughs> you know, when we have it, that's been one of the beauties of COVID is no traffic. Um, but as it's coming back, just, you know, if we're sitting in traffic, just I am breathing in, I am breathing out and staying present and, and staying in a centered space, no matter what's going on. Great. So for some of the listeners out there, you know, I, I did not, I did not know how to breathe. Like I thought I knew how to breathe, but you know, I was a chest breather. I was like, you know, I was just breathing here. And, and what I learned from you is to take a real, a full breath in like from my roots, you know, I like to visualize like roots growing out of my feet, grounding me into the earth. And I like to visualize a beautiful wave of golden energy on the inhalation coming up to my legs, which are red, and then into orange and into my belly, which is yellow, and then up into my heart, which is green, and then bringing up into my throat, which is blue, and then my third eye, which is purple. And then I like to visualize a beautiful crown on my head, Mm -hmm. opening up and this beautiful divine light washing away on the exhalation, anything that doesn't service me, anything that I don't need anymore, any old thoughts, any crap, any stuff, maybe I, maybe it is I need to forgive somebody or I'm holding on to something, you know, and on the, on the inhalation, you know, I'm breathing it in and then the, on the exhalation, it's like the wave coming out and washing away everything right out my roots. So it's a cleansing breath, you know, I, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And I've truly found that we have the power to heal ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, during that whole time, I didn't mention that I, when seven years ago, I had I torn my rotator cuff and my labrum, and I was in a sling for six months, seven months, and I could not work or I couldn't do anything. So when I would sit in meditation, I would really focus my energy on my shoulder. And I remember I went to the doctor and he showed me the pictures, the imagery, and he said, well, you have a retracted supraspinatus that you have to have surgery, or you're never gonna be able to lift your arm again. And through meditation and bringing that energy there, you know, I, I throw a football with my son, I, you know, and I found that during the time during COVID, when I stopped doing my meditation, I stopped bringing my energy, I'm starting to feel the pains again. So now I'm going back to that practice, you know, of just breathing and bringing that energy. So I, I truly believe we have the power to heal ourselves. We absolutely do. And, and I can so relate to what you were saying. For me, it was not so much at the beginning of, of COVID where my um, practice had shifted or was interrupted a bit. It was when I became a single mom because my kids were two and three and a half. And I, when we were married, I still, I, I always had my mornings and their dad would take care of them and I would go do my meditation. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, like, okay, with a two and a three and a half year old, like I have to kind of be there. And so I, I gave myself a little more flexibility at that point. And I said, you know, I'm still going to meditate every day, but it may be after they go to bed or it may, you know, and I gave myself a period of time where there was, it wasn't first thing in the morning, like it used to always be because inevitably at that age, they usually ended up in my bed at some point anyway. Um, But then I, then I just started explaining to them that 
I was going to meditate every morning and they, and I started at a very young age teaching them meditation and so much so that my son and by the time he was in kindergarten was teaching meditation to all of his peers. Um, awesome. But I started teaching them meditation. And then I started telling them, you know, I'm a better mommy when, when I have this time to meditate, you can either sit and meditate with me or just, I need this time. And now they, they just know And your son, I know he's old enough to understand that, you know, if you just, you can either invite him in or just create maybe some sacred space for yourself. And one thing about, I mean, you were meditating at a church, the energy in a church is so just sacred in itself. So just creating that sacred space, you know, there's a little corner of your room. Yeah. Well, the beauty is, is now, you know, the, the, the church has opened up again. So oh, the, right. Yeah. This morning I dropped them off at school and I went right to my spot. And oh I, yeah. And the schools are open, right? Yeah. And it was awesome. I lit up. I, I you know, I really... I felt that it was it was a, just a little taste of it. Just it wasn't like that full blown whoa, what's going on here? You know, bliss, joy, ah, uh, tears rolling down your eyes. You know, it wasn't that, but it was that I could see it was like right there. Yeah. You know, so I think it's a beauty. You know, I teach all my actors this because you know, it's I think it's the greatest tool in order to be a really good actor. You have to be relaxed. You know, you have to your instrument has to be relaxed. And I know for me as a young actor, you know, I would, uh, you know, go to an audience, you know, when I went to acting school, you used to sit in a chair and go, ah, you know, you do all these exercises, you know, you can't yeah. do that in a lobby, <laughs> you know, you look like a crazy person. Which, yeah, right. You can breathe. And, and, I, and I think if you train yourself on a daily basis and you, you work on your breath and you teach yourself to, to ground yourself and have... So what happens is when you're at that audition and you may have a little adrenaline pumped through your veins and you may be a little nervous, I call it excited. You can take Same that breath. Thing. <laughs> you can take that breath and your mind is going to go, oh, I know what we're doing here. We're yeah. shutting down the noise. We're getting out of our head and getting into our heart. And I it's a that. practice. So you, you want to work that muscle on a daily basis. So when you need it, it's there for you. It's a breath away, yeah. You no, know? and it's and it's and it's a truly powerful tool to have in in your actor toolbox. So, absolutely. What what if you could give like a little sample of how to breathe? I mean, or like a grounding practice that an actor could do in the morning. What would you recommend? I would recommend. Should we do it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me switch my position here. <laughs> okay, so if you're listening to this podcast right now while you're driving the car. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> and you want to pull over and, and take a few minutes for yourself to breathe. Yeah. Or you could do this while driving and just eyes open. <laughs> but um, but if you're not driving, just take a moment and close your eyes and become aware of where you are. Become aware by listening to any sounds around you. Just if there are sounds, just move from one sound to the next without becoming distracted or disturbed by any one sound. Just allowing the sounds to blend together like a symphony, harmoniously. And feel the temperature on your skin. Feel where your clothes touch your body and where the air touches your body. If there are any smells, experience those as well. If you're sitting, feel the seat beneath you, the chair beneath you, your feet on the ground. Just 
And then without changing it, begin to experience the breath flowing in and out only through the nose. Air moving in, air moving out only through the nostrils. And begin to notice everything about the breath. Notice the difference between the inhalation and the exhalation. Maybe there's a difference in temperature or a sharpness and a softness. And gradually begin deepening the breath. Allow each breath to become more expansive as you inhale. And more of a release as you exhale. And every time you exhale, relax your shoulders a bit more, your forehead, your temples, your skin. And as you inhale, feel the lungs expand top to bottom, side to side, front to back. Full expansion, just pause at the top. And a full exhalation, deflating, releasing, letting go. And continue breathing in this way. Aware of the breath, perhaps adding the simple mantra, I am breathing in. I am breathing out. And using that as the foundation or the beginning of any meditation practice that you do. So from here, there a few directions you can go if, if there's been a lot on your mind, you can just stay with the breath and begin to watch each thought as though you're watching a cloud passing in the sky. Each thought a new cloud. No thought more significant than another. And staying with the rhythm of the breath, the awareness of the rise and fall of the chest. The feeling of the breath at the nostrils. And as you stay with the breath, you begin to notice that there is more space between each cloud, more space between each of the thoughts. And you get to this, what we call the void. The nothingness, where you are simply the observer, the witnessing consciousness. And you can also, you can begin to either visualize or feel in every cell of your body as though what your goal is has already happened. So if you are an actor and there is a role that you are auditioning for and that you really want, you can feel what it would feel like to get that call from your agent that you got the role. Or maybe, maybe it is a goal to receive an Academy Award. You can picture that in your mind or feel how that, how would that feel in every cell of your body for that to happen? And you can really do this with any, with any goal that you have in your life. You can just, after you're in a completely relaxed state, works well when you first wake up in the morning or as you're drifting off to sleep, get into that feeling state. What does it feel like? If you're a visual person, you may visualize it as well. 
And get into that feeling state for a moment, perhaps get a visual of it, whatever your goal is that you're working on in this moment right now. And breathe into it. And then let it seep into every cell as you again listen to the sounds around you. Feel the temperature on your skin. Deep in the breath, coming back into this moment right now, but keeping the future memory alive in your cells. And as you're ready, blink your eyes open and just make your way back into the here and now. That's just a little sampling. I love that. I love that. You know, I'm a big believer, you know, I mean, anything I've ever wanted in my life, ever achieved in my life, I visualize it first. And I believe that I can make that dream a reality. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, this studio, I visualized this studio. I knew exactly what it was going to look like. I, I saw it in my, my mind's eye. You know, when I wanted to be an actor, I used to sit and watch this TV series called The Fall Guy with Lee Majors, and it was about Hollywood and stuntmen. And I visualized myself doing that. And then when I came out to Hollywood, when I was 18 with 200 bucks, guess what my first audition was for? The Fall Guy. <laughs> of course it was. Uh, That's amazing. I got the part. And got my Screen Actors Guild card, and the rest is history, you know. But I truly believe that we have the power to plant that seed, you know, in in your brain and really visualize it. So that you know, you, you just took me to the Oscar stage. I was holding my Oscars, you know. So I, you know, I well, thought you were. <laughs> I, I do it up, you know, and and believe me, I'm I'm working on it. You know, I. You know, it's one thing about visualizing, but then you got to take massive action to make the dream a reality, you know? Well, the thing is, if when you do the meditation and you stay with that visual, perhaps when you wake up and as you're drifting off, and it can be maybe your meditation practices in the morning, but even as you're drifting off to sleep, just kind of having that visual or feeling it in your cells, um, then it doesn't seem like you're working so hard to make it happen. It just, it's inspired action. Yeah, you're so, it, that that visual really is so deeply ingrained in your cells that the next step just comes to be. You, you know what to do next because it's, it's implanted in you. Love that, yeah. You know, if you see it, you know, I, I'm a big believer, like every January here at the Manhattan Actors Studio, I have my actors create vision boards. Oh, you know, really have a vision, see, see yourself on that Oscar stage, see yourself working. You know, you want to work with uh, Tom Cruise? Well, get a picture of Tom Cruise in, on set and cut out the other actor, put your face in there. You know, yeah. so you see it on a daily basis, you know, and then if you sit in meditation and you visualize it and you see yourself doing it, you know, it the, the dream will become a reality. I know, I mean, it's happened to me so many times. Yeah. I mean, one, one, one year we were doing it here on my stage and my actors, you know, we had limited magazines, right? And so everybody, there was like one travel magazine and everybody had cut out all the pictures. So I got the magazine after like 10 actors had cut out pictures. So there was not really much left to choose from to yeah. put a vision board, you know? But there was this picture of a blue gondola and I cut it out and I put it on my vision board and, on, and I have my vision board where I see it on a daily basis, you know, where I walk past it and I see it and I take a moment to breathe into that and see it, visualize it. And I think it was like December, it was like almost the end of the year and my sister-in-law calls me up, and my wife, and says, hey, I'm going to um, Rome. I got an Airbnb. And there's an extra room. So if you guys want to go, you know, you know, all you have to do is pay for the airfare. And I was like, why not? Let's go. And then from Rome, next thing I know, I'm on a train. I'm going to Venice and I'm in Venice and I took a picture and it's the same freaking blue gondola <laughs> that's on I my vision board. You yeah. know, and it's because I put it there. 
yeah that the universe it's, aligned things perfectly for me to get to, to venice so i truly believe in that and i truly believe in in the power of of you know meditation you know yeah it's life-changing it, it really is. And yeah, because meditation, just like the vision boards, it's all about these impressions upon your subconscious mind. I had something very similar happen. Um, really wanted to, I was living in an apartment with the kids and um, really just knew I wanted to be in a house, especially once COVID hit. And I did a vision board actually, yeah, several months before. And every every picture, I did it with my kids. We did a family vision board of a home and every picture they had, it was a mansion with a huge swimming pool. And, um, and for me, I was, I've always wanted, I, I like, I like a big property, but I like smaller home. I like the family to stay together and just bigger yard and everything. Long story short, that's exactly what we're living in. We found, I was completely guided to this place. I found this vision board about a month ago and one of the pictures that I put on is so similar to the house that we're in. It has this beautiful yard, but the like there, I was just like, wow. I look at this vision board and I showed the kids. I said, look, we uh we're living basically in this house that we created this vision board for. Amazing. You know, I I when we moved down to the beach and I found an old vision board from like the Hollywood days and we had a beach house mm. and I looked at the, I, I dusted it off and I said, babe, come here, look at this. Yeah. And the beach house was the same. We had, it had like, you know, white wood rafters, high ceilings, this, the, the, they had a, this bar and this, everything was the same. I mean, it was literally the same. Uh, it was amazing that that yeah. came to fruition. I mean, big believer. So take some time to breathe. You know, if you're out there, see what you want, visualize it, take some time in stillness, find your breath, tap into your truth. You know, you're not your thoughts. Your yeah. thoughts are gonna lie to you. They're gonna tell you fear and you're not good enough and you're not worthy. And you know, they're gonna tell you a bunch of lies. But if you can get out of your head and get into your heart, your true power, who you really are, this beautiful light, you know, this beautiful light that needs to shine bright, you, you gotta give yourself permission to shine bright because you deserve it and you're worthy of it and you're valuable and the world needs you. You know, it really needs you to shine your light. I mean, you know, Julie, you're such a great example of shining your light, you know? And, and you've taught me so much. And that's what I, that, you know, for me, my life all is, is about being of service. It's, it's, you know, before it was about me, 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 you know, the actor, me, me, but it's not about me anymore. It's about we, it's about being of service is how can I add, you know, value to somebody else's life? How can I make somebody else's dream a reality? Right. I've done it. I've been blessed. I've, I've had, I, I made my dream come true. Now I want my destiny and that's to be the greatest acting teacher out there and to be the guy to help other people achieve their dreams yeah. so you know during the the covid i mean like i said the fertilizer of covid i planted seeds of my podcast yeah. now i have a podcast that's global and i get to share my 35 years of experience in, in hollywood and my 35 years of relationships of people that I know in the industry and all kinds of people, not even just actors, producers, directors, yoga teachers, you know, all of these people that have inf influenced me. And I know they have such gold in their brains that I, I, I get to mine now and get those golden nuggets, like this beautiful meditation about visualization that you gave, you know, for the actors. So if you're out there and you're listening, take this meditation and practice it on a daily basis and visualize what you want. And then go after it and your dreams will become true if you believe it and you go after it they will come true and it's all about the self-talk yeah because words are powerful even the internal dialogue that we have so it's it's the visualization the words we say to ourselves, as well as that feeling so 
even when I was living in the apartment, I felt every day in meditation or when I was going to bed and I'd hear my neighbors, I, you know, and I'd be like, gosh, how would it feel to be in a home where it's really peaceful? And I would just get myself there. I would just kind of, how would that feel in my body? And that's, that's the other piece. So seeing it, feeling it, and just knowing on a deep level that it's happening and choosing to be happy even when it hasn't happened yet. Love that. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta be living in that vibration. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Really. Well said. It's it's that vibration. You gotta have, you know, you gotta see yourself, feel it. You know, I love to, you know, as an actor, and you know we have this gift to be able to go back and like really visualize stuff. So when I, when I close my eyes and I see myself, when you said, go see yourself holding an Oscar, I was like, all right, you know, and I, I, I saw myself on stage and I felt, and I felt the, I heard the applause and, you know, sensorily through all my senses, you want to use all your senses. You want to go there, you know, like you say, yeah. any smells, any sounds, any, any tastes, you know, what are you looking at? What are you feeling? All of that stuff, you want to bring all of that in there. So mm -hmm. you really can, can visualize it and see it. So, you know, it, and it's a great tool for an actor to practice is, is visualization. Absolutely. You put yourself somewhere or even go back to an event, you know, like the greatest day of your life. If you go back there and you, you remember where you were and who, was, who you were with and what you felt and any smells, any sounds, any tastes, if you can go back there, you can really, really, get the that sensation again that amazing sensation you know for me you know i i've taken what i've what you what i've learned from you and what i've learned from some other and i made a little concoction of of my my meditation and it's got a little uh, havening technique which you know i spoke to you about which yeah. is pretty amazing because what i found is the havening technique is like the door to the next level for me so then when I sit in stillness, after I've havened myself, I've released delta waves in my brain and I'm already at a heightened state. So it makes me drop in a lot faster. And then to add some affirmational work, I am work. So this tool, you know, is such a great tool for actors because, you know, sometimes we have to go to maybe places that we go into our actor toolbox. Let's say I have to get emotional. And I got to cry in the scene. Well, you know, I'm going to go into my actor toolbox and I'm going to pick my emotional scabs and, and use that as my paint to paint the canvas of the scene. And, and I'm going to come from my truth. I'm going to substitute. I'm going to personalize. But then what I found is for me as a young actor is I, after that, I make art, but then I'd walk out of the theater and I was still bleeding. Right. <laughs> I was depressed. I was sad. I was whatever, because I was, I was picking some of those old scabs. Right. So I don't want that for my actors. So, you know, you can go in there, you can use it, you can make art out of it. But then after you want to sit in stillness and wash away and breathe and get grounded and then fill your heart with all that good stuff, you know, stack the good stuff, those beautiful yeah. moments in your life and breathe into that. And if you stack all the good and you get present, you can't be in the past. Right. You know, you can use it, you can make art out of it, but you don't have to live over there. So you can get present again and, and really treat it like that, like a present, like a kid on Christmas, you know, yeah. and play with it, you know, and that's a beautiful energy to be in. If you can fill your heart with love and lead with love and come from love. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're in love, there's, it's, love is the highest vibration. Mm -hmm. So you attract so much more love into your life. And also um, it takes the ego out. Love it me. allows you to just really be a channel for whatever it is. If there's, if you take the ego out of it, you can be a channel for whatever character you're playing. Let that, that get out of your own way and let that character come through, yeah. Love that. You know, I always tell my actors, you know, you want to do the work. You want to create the character. You want to make all those choices. You want to, you know, do all of that stuff. But the cherry on top of it all mm -hmm. is your energy coming into the room and shining your light. Because, you know, it's like 
moths to a light. They don't know why they're attracted to it, but they're they're, they're attracted to it. If you mm -hmm. come into the room just shining your light in love, they're going to go, what, what's, you know, somebody's, the other actors are in fear. You're coming in in love and light and peace and joy. It's a different vibration. I'm going to want to work with you than that Absolutely. other actor that's in their head. Absolutely. So that's a, that little nice little cherry on top. But that's a practice. You want to practice. So if, if there are some listeners out there and they want to learn more about, you know, yoga and meditation where 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 can i lead them what what's the website what's your instagram what's you know where should they go um so julierader.com j-u-l-i-e-r-a-d-e-r.com and julierader.la is my instagram that one um i don't know if you i've been dive doing a deep deep dive into the astrology these past several years and um and so that's a lot of my um instagram is astrology now but i'm um, combining the two i'm getting ready actually next week i'm starting a yoga and astrology seven week series virtual yoga and meditation which i'm really excited about awesome congratulations love thank that. you all you're such a guiding light you know thank you, you know, I, feel, I feel your energy just being here with you i can feel your energy you know? Oh, likewise, and thank you. It's so you're fun. you're such a bright light as well. So I really I'm honored that you asked me to be part part of this podcast. Thank you. I'm honored you came on my show. <laughs> thank you. So once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I hopefully I get to see you sometime soon. You know, now that things are seen a little light at the end of the tunnel, I'd love to you know maybe I don't know sit in a meditation with you sometime. That'd be great. I would love that. That would be great. Okay, stay safe. You too. Stay healthy, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Please rate, review, share this with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Please take whatever you get from here, the golden nuggets, and apply them to your career. Go after your dreams with passion. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done. I believe in you. Follow your dreams. I'll see you in Hollywood.